Hello everybody and welcome to this Reno video tutorial. I am Vanessa Stegg for McNeil. In today's tutorial, we will be focusing on the fork in this scene. Now we won't be building all of the object. We will only focus on creating the curves that define its shape by using a few curve creation tools, as well as the mirror command, which are all history enabled. You'll see how only pushing and pulling a few control points we can define and iterate between multiple shapes until we get to the desired aesthetics that we're looking for. So let's get started. So we're now back in Rhino in the top viewport. You'll see on screen a few technical constraints that will help us place our curves while maintaining proportions and overall size. So let's start by running the control point curve command. But before we do anything, make sure you go down to the bottom by the modeling aids and you right click over record history and you select always record history as well as update children. You can deactivate the other two. History is a workflow that consists in generating an initial geometry and keeping an association with the downstream geometry it generates. If you want to learn more about history, I will be posting a link to a video that explains the basics. So let's start by running the control point curve command. And by activating end and near object snaps, I'll use the reference layer to start drawing my profile curve. Again, a minimum of control points is all we need to define the shape. At this point, and by taking into account a few of the measurements, I will now deactivate the reference curve layer and further work on my curve. The first thing we'll do is go over to the transform tab and click on the mirror command. Selecting my object, pressing enter, and using the command line option X axis to define the mirror plane. Now I have my parent curve and the mirrored copy that it generated that is considered a child which means that any edits I run on the original curve will equally affect the generated copy. Let's go over to the curve tools and use another history enabled command called tween curves. Tween curves allows me to select a couple of curves and define intermediate shapes in between. I can select the number say four and the method. This we will not get into, but just defines the control point structure of the generated curves, whether very simple or very dense. We will stick with none. And under number, we will actually go back to two. These curves will serve me to define the tines of the fork. Again, we have a parent, we have a child, and we have another child from my two original curves. So at this point, I will note that my original curve is the one responsible for all of the hierarchy of this construction. I'll move, for instance, just a few control points down and the rest of the curve construction will follow along. This is very powerful as with only the selection of a few control points, I can quickly get a visual idea of what my fork definition will be like, understanding how it affects its symmetric counterparts. Of course, using the gumball to move the control points in three axis is very practical for this type of workflow. Now I will push this further. Again, under the curve tools, I will use the offset command. I will set the distance, let's say to three, and activate a new Rhino 6 command option, which is called loose. Loose allows me to create my offset 
with the same control point structure or simplified control point structure of the original parent. This means that in the future, it'll be easy to control point edit this curve if necessary. I will run the offset command again, activating the loose option and the both size option, and because of it, changing the distance to something smaller. And then selecting the time to the side of the original time to build offsets on both sides of it. Again, with the loose option, I have a simplified control point structure that I can control point edit further in the future or that will help me build simplified surfaces from it. Now I will go over to the transform tab again and mirror the new curves I just generated. Perfect. Offset is also history enabled. So you'll see that by moving only the control points of my original curve, it will affect all of my setup. This makes it a very easy way to iterate between multiple shapes. To end the construction, I will go back to the curve tools and use the blend curve command. Now, blend curve is a very popular command in Rhino. I'll run it again. Just to cap the ends of the tines and the handle. I will hide the intermediate curves, which are no longer necessary, and cluster up the view. We can mirror the two blends and get a better understanding of what my fork will look like. Now, new to v6 is that blend curve is history enabled in two different ways. Not only by editing the input curves, which means that by pulling and pushing control points, the blend will keep the chosen continuity to the parent curves. And we can see how this adapts and flows. I also get the ability to run the command again, click on the edit command line option. At that point, all of the blends in the file get highlighted. I can choose the one I want to edit, and I am back in the dialog that created the curves in the first place. I can then simplify, change options, and move handles to adjust the shape. Let's make this one a little bit longer and let's add to some cap. And just by controlling as we've done since the beginning of this tutorial, the original curve that generated all of this construction, the rest of my curves follow along. That is all for today. I hope you've enjoyed, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put it in the comment box. If you want to be informed of our future videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.